I just finished putting together that saw. And the body of this video is going to be, well, a couple of details related to um, assembling 372s, a couple of little details that people overlook from time to time. And rather than going through and doing the complete uh, assembly part by part, there's a lot of that out there on YouTube. I figure I'll focus on some of the, the minor things that get left out from time to time. And also when you're you know, putting together a saw, things you forget to um, have on hand and can be very frustrating as you try to finish off a project. So this is some details. I'll show that as we go further into the video. And the other thing is, um, this is a saw build for a firewood guy, and didn't have a lot of money to spend on a saw, so I took a blown up 372 and put a OEM top end on it, and um, a bunch of Hudsel plastic on it, because the uh, original plastic was pretty, pretty ugly, and basically freshened up this saw. Lots of junk on this table. I'm um, going to make this short video. Doing a 372 build, and it's about testing some other parts from Farmer Tech. Side cover with the integral chain adjuster. It's a pretty good looking part. Chain brake lever. It's also a decent looking part. I've used these before and they've worked pretty well. Now they don't sell them for the x Torx. This is only for the uh, standard 372s because the x Torx is actually a little bit longer because the covers are taller. Well not interchange. Um, cylinder was a stock OEM 372 put on with 3 bond, no base gasket. Muffler mod by me, OEM boot, and the cases are OEM, chain brake, all that stuff is OEM. And let's see if I have a, yes, there's a tag. So you can see what it was at one point in its life. The bearings are Natchez. The seals came from Forrester, which I suspect is Farmer Tech. Um, I'm just kind of curious to see how this thing stands up. Just another build. Now, one part that I've gotten from Farmer Tech that's radically improved over the first versions are these tank handles. The anti vibe springs are actually the right length on these, where the first ones I got they weren't. And instead of those goofy wire wrapped throttle cables I've got these, that actually look pretty good. And they also have the right fuel line arrangement. I gotta tell you, if you put this thing up with a stock OEM tank, other than the color of the trigger parts and the throttle cable, you'd have, you, you would be hard pressed to tell the difference. It's that much better than the first versions, which were really blocky and didn't look that good at all. But they worked. So that one's going on. The pull starts actually have a little larger rope than the first one that I used that snapped. You know, the plastic's all right. It's not great. I think it falls into the categories. It works. It's cheap. You know, stuff like that doesn't look too good. But yet again, it's going to work. Um, and this can save you a lot of money, by the way, if you're doing crush damage builds and things like that. The top cover, I actually like these. These are also Farmer Tech. Of course, you can get them through other brands, but. They're basically all from the same place. Like the handle, these are actually pretty decent quality. And I've used them in the winter time. They don't seem to be more brittle than OEM, so they're a decent, they're a decent uh, option. 
Of course, I'm going to use standard carburetor, OEM style carburetor. It's also got a single ring 371 piston in that OEM barrel. So this is truly a blend. But you know when you're doing saws like this, and I've said this a whole bunch of times, um, this stuff here, the handles and little bits of plastic and pull starts, they can nickel and dime you to death. So you think you're starting with a, you know, a low cost project and you end up spending as much as a new damn saw. This is a Farmer Tech part. It's made of aluminum. I'm actually kind of excited to try this. I've been wanting to use this for quite some time and this has given me the option. The, the OEM ones are plastic. Now, you know, there could be dimensional issues that I have not seen yet, but I just want to put it on the saw and see. Um, I actually like the concept of the aluminum over the plastic. I think that's that might be an enhanced part over OEM. I know it's sacrilegious to say. Shows you that. I've used these two. They're all right. You know, I haven't had any failures. Um, sometimes you gotta open up the holes a little bit to get them over the bar studs. I've run into that. Um, but as far as a functional part for the right kind of money, not a bad deal at all. So, this is going to be truly a blended saw. Now, this is a, a part. Um, a lot of people, you know, they question should they use it. And what that does is you see that collar right there? Well, these O-rings are a seal between where that collar intersects the main bearing. And it kind of pushes up against this little O-ring and seals and takes away one of the possible air leaks into the crankcase. I use them to answer the question. Um, I always keep a few of them around because this is the kind of part that when people do projects they'll forget about. And uh, also there's that ring washer that sits down in there. And so you put this on the crankshaft first, the collar second, and then that washer third. And then, uh, um, by the way, this oil pump is also a Farmer Tech. I'm going to try those. So this has actually got a fair number of Farmer Tech parts in it. You know, there's another part that I'm going to use from the Farmer Tech set of parts. And that's the bushing here. You know, and that goes uh, underneath the chain brake handle. My God, I've seen these things go for like $8. Well, I bought 40 of them for 10 so... I don't think I'm going to run out of those anytime soon. And gaskets. I've had pretty good luck with their gaskets, and yet again, they're pretty cheap. So, you know, for a dealer, I'm not recommending that. But for a guy like me who's building uh, toy saws for, for fun and games, why not save some money, you know? It makes the hobby possible. Um, I mean, there's some parts I found to this point that I wouldn't recommend. Absolutely. But a lot of this stuff here, it'll save you a hundred bucks, you know, on a saw, on a saw build, or more. But the kind of things that I stay OEM with, for me, and again, it's just because I haven't had time to try the others. Carbs, boots, the clamp, um, crank and cases. Um, I'm not speaking out of experience, but I've been using, I've, I've got a supply of, of old cases and cranks. I've just been using OEM, and I think I would recommend sticking with OEM. I've got nothing to tell me not to, but I've got plenty of reasons why I should. Of course, I don't use the uh, Farmertech bearings, although I have no reason to believe they wouldn't be just fine. I've been using these. You know, they seem to work pretty good for me. And uh, what else? I don't know. Maybe I'll take a snapshot or two as I build a saw, or maybe I'll just post it because that's really the points I wanted to make. Is um, this is the beginning of a test, and this saw will get run for a couple of years, 
probably not by me. And then a few years from now, we'll go back and review and see which of those parts stood up and which of them didn't. Which parts didn't stand up. You know, it seems to fit beautifully. Also use OEM on that part in these. Now, the reason I'm showing this is, yeah, that's a Farmer Tech part, and I believe so is this. That's OEM, like I said before, same as the top end. I'm going to put a wall bro in there. Now, a couple things that people forget is there's a plastic part that goes right there to sort of uh, guide the cable. I can't tell you how many people ask me whether or not that's required. Uh, the answer is yes. You want that right in there. See where it goes? These, they go right there. And yeah, it's really a good idea to have those in there too. They're cheap. If you don't have them in your junk pile, go down to the dealer and buy a bunch. Those are OEM, as is that part. But I'm so far pretty impressed with this aluminum part. That looks like it's really cool. I'm kind of curious about how the cable is going to get through there. I may have to do a little bit of surgery on that. You know, we'll see. Yeah, I stole it off another carb. So now I have all the detail parts for the intake. You know, that was used OEM, that's OEM, that's Farmer Tech. Farmer Tech. I did put the cable in there. It fits just fine. All well, this is OEM. And that little ring is OEM. And I also bought a bunch of uh, OEM intake carb screws. You know, stuff like that. I'm sure there's other sources. And, you know, maybe I'll go down and see if I can't match them up and get some other options. But, you know, they're pretty cheap. I think the reason why I'm doing this is there's a pile of videos out there right now for building 372s. And so I don't really, I don't really need to go through that process. And this is directed towards the uh, hobbyist who likes to do junk pile saws like I do. Aftermarket has a place there. Because if I was to buy all that stuff OEM, let's say the saw I got came with either damaged or missing parts like this. Going to eBay and buying aftermarket stuff for these kind of parts can make a, a junk pile saw both useful and affordable. I've used some of this stuff for quite a while and, and um, it works, you know, may not be as pretty, but it works. That's the point. It just helps us get through these project saws and we have fun with them. Cyclops is going to be retired. Um, it's proven its point. It runs really strong. So this isn't Cyclops 2. That one actually is in process. What I've got is I've got a cylinder that I've ported um, fairly extensively. You know, it's got the magic numbers for me. And uh, I'm going to replace the original Cyclops cylinder with that cylinder sometime later in the year just because it can. So... Anyway, ways to keep this hobby affordable. That's what this is about. I can tell you what. Um, I continue to be impressed with this Farmatech part right there. I use a T-handle. And, you know, when I got in there and cinched up on those screws, there wasn't any of that sort of uh, squishy feeling you get with the plastic parts there. That's, that tightened up nice and solid. Mm -hmm. Highly, highly, highly recommend this at this point in time. Of course, we'll see how it plays out over the year. But my first impression of that part is I want more. I think I would prefer that over OEM at this point. Very, very solid feel to it when I, when I tightened up on it. Another part I'm sticking to OEM is the ignition. I'm going to put a uh, black one on this saw. Let it rev a little bit. Um, I've used the aftermarket ones, and I had two fail so far. So unless it's my saw, I'm not going to use these anymore. I'm going to stick with, with these. Well, pretty much have this one put together. And 
It's got a lot of Huzzle plastic on it. I think this is like the Huzzle Saw Round 2. But the build has an OEM cylinder and piston, OEM crankcase and crankshaft, um, OEM flywheel and ignition, um, OEM carb boot, but the Hudzel bracket between the carburetor and the boot. It's made of aluminum. I'm kind of excited to see how that works out. I think that's better than stock if, if it uh, holds up. I like that aluminum concept. Hudzel filter for now. They work, you know, they're a little loose, but they work. It's got an OEM handle, but a Hudzel chain brake lever. These are some of the Hudzel parts that I like top cover and I started with a, a Hudsel muffler and put a three-quarter inch tube in there has no base gasket build it was built with the 1184 I think the next thing that I want to try from the Hudsel suite of parts is just try their whole bottom end just see how it works total bar set up with uh, LGX chain so yep I plug the decomp always do I guess it's time to go fire this thing up and see how it runs I'll cut some trees with it and just make sure everything is working make sure it's oiling and all that stuff Well, I'm going to turn this into a test log. It's an old maple we took down a while back in one of the videos. There might be a saw log in here, I'm not sure. But I do know there's cookies up there. So it started on the third pole, so maybe fourth pole. It started really easy. So, uh, cuts without doing anything to the carburetor. So I think what I want to do is uh, just see where it is and make sure it's oiling and uh, maybe tighten the chain a little bit. And I think that saw is done. So
feels like it has a lot more torque as well. So no replacement for displacement yet again.